Mr. Sonnenberg here. Today we're talking about pure substances, mixtures, and solutions. I'm going to try to zip through this as it might be a little bit lengthy. But first, I want you to watch something really quick. Here it comes. <laughs> okay, hopefully, uh, hopefully I didn't startle you too much. Okay, so let's get rolling here. Okay, so what we're talking about, pure substances, uh, mixtures... Okay, so we have to talk about mixtures, elements, and compounds. So basically, scientists like to classify things. So uh, they like to classify by composition. So really what they classify them by are mixtures, elements, and compounds. And we're going to talk more thoroughly about all those. So why isn't it a good job, though, to classify matter by its phases? So by phases, I mean if it's solid, liquid, or gas, what phase changes it occurs? Okay, does it sublimate? Does it form condensation, evaporation, freezing, melting, what does it do? Well, the reason is, take a look at this iceberg right here. Icebergs, it's ice, okay? It's water that's frozen, okay? And it's in a solidified form, but then you notice it's floating in liquid water. It's submerged, or not totally submerged, sorry, but it's, it's actually floating and it's displacing water below and it's actually floating. And so what's happening is you have liquid water, well, it's in different phases. So we can't classify because it's still water. All of it is water. Same uh, physical composition except for just different states. So that's why we can't classify it that way. So why isn't matter classified according to color? Well, we have a picture of gold, a sunflower, and a sun. Well, they're not the same. Gold is a hard uh, metal. It's shiny. It's lustrous. Sunflower is a living organism. And the sun radiates heat, and we can't get close to it, and light, right? And it lights our whole, our whole uh, world up. <laughs> so scientists ask themselves a few questions, though. Is matter uniform throughout, which means it's the same, kind of like a ball player and a ball team. They all wear uniforms, and they're all the same. That's how you can remember uniform. It can, be, can it be separated by physical means? Can you physically separate it? Can I take the M&Ms out of the trail mix, right? Can I... Take a uh, strainer, can I separate them? Or can I separate it by chemical means? Okay? And dissociate it, right? So, by asking those questions, you can classify matter into three things mixtures, elements, and compounds. So, basically, two or more substances that are chemically combined with each other are called mixtures, okay? And this is done by physical means, okay? Whereas elements, though, are the simplest form of a pure substance. So by simplest, I mean they can't be broken down any farther. So the elements are actually on the periodic table of elements. So sodium, chlorine, hydrogen, helium, gold, iron, sulfur, all those are elements. But then if you take two or more of those elements and you combine them, uh, those two pure substances, what you form is called a compound. And then they can be broken down into simpler forms by chemical means. So you can chemically alter them back into their uh, back into their elements. Now, if you do that, we can we could show you that with water. Water is a compound. It splits up into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. You can split it up into and excuse me, <laughs> jeez. Uh, if you <laughs> if you do that, uh, then what you can do is you can test for it. And you can put a test tube over the electrolysis machine or apparatus. And you can actually collect that gas. And if you take a match and you put it in and it goes and it pops, then that means it's hydrogen. If you take a glowing splint and you put it in when it, you blow it out and it still it reignites, then you know it's oxygen. Okay. So pure substances versus mixtures. What's the difference? Well, matter that is a fixed constant composition is a pure substance. So it contains only one type of element or compound. So when we call that homogeneous and homo meaning the same. Mixtures though, they contain two physically combined compounds and can be homogeneous or heterogeneous and are heterogeneous meaning different, so different components. Okay, so uh, heterogeneous mixtures, the components are not evenly distributed, okay, and the mixture has two or more distinct phases that are usually detectable. So the type of mixture does not have uniform properties. So it's not uniform like homogeneous mixtures. Okay. So if you take a look at this picture here, you can take a look at the granite. Well, that's a chunk of granite. And you look at the cross section and the colors with the green and the yellow, black, and the white, they're not uniformly scattered, which means they don't have the exact same pattern throughout. They're scattered, kind of messy and all over the place. That means they're heterogeneous. 
Okay, blood's also a type of heterogeneous mixture. It's the red blood cells that float in the blood plasma. They're not uniformly scattered. They just kind of clump against each other however they want. But heterogeneous matter means there's different types throughout. So it's always a mixture, and except for solutions are a special consideration. They're a type of mixture, but they're not heterogeneous. They're homogeneous. That's, so, that's why we said heterogeneous mixtures can be homogeneous, or mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous because solutions actually look uniformly scattered, okay, because that's a, a solute dissolving in a solvent, okay, so there are two or more physically combined substances, elements and compounds, so examples are blood, air, and muddy water, okay, so just going to show you this chart, and we'll end right here, so matter, okay, so if we take a look at the matter here, all right, so we've got it here, matter is anything that takes up space and has mass, so we have to ask this first question right here, okay? Is it uniform uh, throughout? And if the answer here is no, okay, then we have a heterogeneous mixture, which means it's different. But if it is uniform, which means the same, scattered the same throughout and all kind of in line, if the answer is yes, then what we call it is a homogeneous mixture. And so now homogeneous meaning the same because it's uniformly scattered, kind of like the ball players on the field. They all have the same uniform. Can it be separated by physical means is the next question we need to ask. Okay? If the answer is no, then we have a pure substance. If it's yes, then we have what's called a homogeneous mixture or a solution. And that's that special, that special mixture because it can be separated. So we can separate uh, salt and water. If I have salt water, all I have to do is evaporate the water out, and what's left is salt residue. And that salt residue is left. And so if you had, say, say you had a pair of black board shorts, and you're in Hawaii, you're in the ocean, and there's salt water, you come out, you lay on the beach after, and then you notice some white streaks on your shorts. Well, that's salt solidifying and crustifying on your shorts because the water evaporated and left that, that salt. So what we've done is we've taken a solution and we've separated it by physical means. Okay? Because, and then, if we take a look over here though, okay, with the pure substance, we ask another question. Okay? We ask, can it be decomposed into substances by chemical process? If it's no and it's already simplified as much as it can get, kind of like calcium and gold and chlorine and all that, those are elements. Okay, right there. But if you can, then it's a compound, kind of like water. H2O can be broken up into H2, oops, <laughs> that should be down here, H2 and O2 gas, right? And we can actually split it up, all right? So then you have a compound right there, all right? So uh, that is pure substances, mixtures, and uh, uh, mixture, or sorry, pure substances, and mixtures, talked about compounds, elements, we talked about heterogeneous versus homogeneous. So hopefully you take this information and you uh, can utilize it for your post assessment. I just have uh, one more little clip I'll show you and there's one more screencast that talks about different types of mechanical mixtures and different types of mixtures. So just take a look at this clip and we'll end with that. <laughs> What can I do for you?